Why? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat 3 and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order, the Ruin, as the United Kingdom. Now, last video, we connected our uh, two dis uh, jointed fronts together. We're now working on possibly crushing the resistance once and for all. I don't know if it'll happen in this video, but it might happen sooner or later. Um. Let's play some fake defenses. And some, yeah, let's see what we got there. Anyway, uh, now the long game begins. Despite the overwhelming odds being against us, we've survived. We are scarred, and yes, we are battered, yet we still live. Through the grace of God and the sacrifice of our brave servicemen, we have survived the initial assault against us by the traitors. With our survival, the war is over, and we can finally plan a strike back against the traitors. Now we must plan for the future. The winter will offer us respite from the war. Give us time to regroup and revitalize our forces. We must use the time wisely and not waste this precious time we've been prepared for the future. The war may not be over by Christmas. Yet we have hope that in a year's time, peace will return to the island. Or so we It was against regulation. It was usually against regulation for a pair of soldiers to be up as late as Ben and Adolf were that Christmas night, but they could hardly be singled out. Their officer had arranged for a few kegs of fine German beer to be smuggled into their encampment so they could make merry as best they could. Of course, as night went on, activity began to peter out. But Ben and Adolf had remained out, sipping their beer and looking at the sky. The two men had remained close after Ben had rescued him. He had requested to be transferred to their units from his own old German one. Forever grateful that Ben had left him to die. They could often be seen with each other, cracking jokes and such. Ben decided that he liked it. He'd been friends back in Birmingham, and obviously respected his brothers in arms, but it was good to have someone he could confidently call him a close friend. You know, Adolf said, breaking silence. My father didn't want me to join the army. Ben set up. Adolf hadn't mentioned his family before. Really? I thought you Germans would be, well, a bit more eager to be help, to help with serving a country given the... Well... <laughs> I can understand what you mean, but no. He was an accountant and wanted me to stay and help with the farm. But it was my Muta who told me I should go do whatever I wish to serve the fatherland. And here I am, he said, waving his mug in the air. Merry old England! Ben laughed and turned, shaking his head. It's funny you should mention that, actually. My dad died, so it was just me and Mum. And she wasn't too keen on me leaving it. Huh. But I knew I had to do something. It was either this or the factory, you know. Adolf nodded understandingly. With fire cracking away, he raised his mug. To carving our own paths. Well... Despite the government's best efforts to accomplish Vizia's economic goals, I must report to the honorable members that the comments that recent complications have forced us to adjust our expectations for economic progress in 1963. Domville was in a foul mood. Alright, Domville. I think I think it's the same event. All right, we got we'll get an encirclement off here. Every man's heart pumped faster than any of them could have ever imagined. Their sweaty hands shook as a familiar pain of the sword-like tree branches scratched their legs, peeling back their skin like a cheese grater. Time to heal will satisfy the M. All but their death was too high of a price for satisfaction. 
The unit re rustled into the forest, caught the ears of Colonel Tim, scraping the mud cake. Sorry, I'm getting a text message. I'll reply real quick. Scraping the mud caked into the Great Warrior helmet, learning the command of his auxiliary unit, permission was granted to probe the men. A bloody and torn home logo engraved on one of their shoulders called for the auxiliary's help. Once the men found the colonel calling to the camp, they were called again, but this time to the headquarters of a site. All of them, completely exhausted, did not have the energy to make plans. The only thing running through their head was water and a place to lay down. It didn't matter to them if it was a soft mattress or the dirt. Thomas Oliver, the young leader of the squad, immediately raised some issues with the plans laid out across the table. Wait, wait, wait. Where are we going to get resources for such an attack? I don't mean to demean any of you, but we are just militia. We can't just go throwing ourselves against a panza and think they won't notice. Colonel Tim was to interject, but conflicting noises of German and Br British German and boots marched marching across interrupted him. Everyone's stomach dropped. Tim took the initiative and managed to peek outside without luring them. It's Jordan's knobheads. The void in their stomach merely filled with warm excitement. Shit. Well, you know, we could probably repurpose these plans for the current moment. Let me start. The guns would grab themselves as everyone nodded with every word. There we go. We got an instrument off. Get these knobs surround surrounded. We're almost halfway there. And I would definitely rather be us than them. Yeah, we got our encirclement done there. Next we'll move in. It doesn't look like we have any troops in Manchester, which is interesting. Um, yeah, here we go. Consumer goods production efficiency. There we are. How do we get effect from collaborator sabotage? To say that Ronald Nall Kane's first formal cabinet meeting was unusual would have been the understatement of the century. It was not normal for the cabinet to be meeting whilst number 10 was a pile of rubber. It's not normal for half the attendees to be military officers, many from a foreign nation, no less. And it certainly was not normal to be meeting as a country plunged into civil war. Gentlemen, we meet today as our country falls into a crisis beyond anything it has ever faced before in its long and noble history. Shall we fail here? Then Britain, as we know it, and love her, huh, shall fall forever. The whole room not in agreement, Fontaine and Wallop especially so, with Butler glancing out towards Wolfe, alongside a fair few of the British officers present. The room was united in fear of a failure, even if divided on reasons for the desperation to prevent resistance victory. I feel, therefore, it is imperative that we begin with an overview of the military situation. General Templar, General Wolfe, if you please. The two officers stood by and began to re read the reports. Wolf began by informing the cabinet that the German garrison had now fully mobilized and was ready to fight, with fresh divisions already en route to relieve the battered forces that had held firm against Resistance's initial assault. Templar then came uh, took over on a grimmer note. Scotland, the complete fall of Newcastle, took to the rebels, had cut off divisions surrounded in Scotland, and they're now completely surrounded and besieged in Edinburgh. How about that? They were holding firm, for now, but unless relief came, then the entire Northern Army could be wiped out. Thank you, Generals. This is grave news, indeed. And all kind of said as Wolf and Templar sat back down, How do you recommend we proceed? Any kind of offensive is a question. We need to outlast the traders and survive the winter. If we can do that, then a summer offensive will be able to smash right through their lines. Templar replied with no Wolf not in agreement. Thank you, Generals. Well, gentlemen, it seems our path is clear. Bound down the hatches and wait for the, the storm out. Once the rabble runs out of steam, we will strike and strike them hard. We mustn't falter. Not now. And so begins a long winter. 
I think we're doing way better than we're supposed to be doing. Um... What will be better? This will get us oil stuff. I'll actually go with this. The oil depleted. It's no secret that Britain has been relying on the Germans for oil for the past few decades. Now that the Reckon's oil fiefdoms have collapsed, we find ourselves in a especially dire straits in regards to fuel. No, in short, no thanks to the panzers rolling around the countryside. We need to take every possible measure to ensure that we'll have enough oil to weather the coming storm. It will be a difficult task, but a necessary one, lest the resistance catch us with our trousers down. There we are. Well, we've almost secured all of England. Now we're about to take Manchester, which I'm surprised we have it already. I'm surprised we left it as open as it was. The rest of the south is just turning into a big glorified encirclement. That's like the best way to describe it. Uh, we could actually start uh, fighting up here. Which offensive is in the north, I did not expect. We'd be able to have those. And yet, here we are. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Hey, Jack. You have a, you know, uh, seen of those rebels? Jordan was saying that the wankers and freaks solidify their positions here, and yet I haven't seen a single one of them. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I couldn't tell you why they aren't here. Eddie, for all we know, they heard our mighty boots and shat themselves. The two laughed, covering up, up that heavy crunch, crunch, crunch. A left resistance member aimed his grenade for about 30 free in front of the yet leading free op corps officer. He was ready to throw it almost an hour ago since he learned of their entrance into the area. Several others aimed their stolen Mauser rifles from the countless camp amp raids. Commander Oliver signaled out to the auxiliary down below. The smuggled sterlings lined up against the tree line, tracked each pair of feet, assorted for the triple dozen in British free corps officers. They watched every single head toss and turn from boredom, most likely wanting to strangle one of the left resistance members with their own hands. Colonel Tim turned his head up and gave the initiative. Pulling the pin and throwing down the grenade, the commander ordered every member of the left resistance on top of the hill to take cover. Crunch, crunch, crunch. The officers of John and Edward got thrown at least three feet backwards as the explosion impacted the two men. The men behind Jack and Edward would have <sighs> to both avoid the body thrown at them, but also for several points of gunfire coming at them. The rest tried to hold the guard, but it ultimately failed. Although cautioned again by Colonel Tim, a handful of soldiers dropped to hit, down to hit the British Free Corps for shovels, hopefully giving them another purpose to their most of the time useless items they had, had around. By the time they got down on the pathway, however, the Free Corps had all been shot. The Scotsman of the group spat up one of the corpses. A glorious victory. Speaking of glorious victory, we have secured the South. My God. Memorandum. Oil supplies. Ever since the defeat of Britain in the Second World War, Britain has almost been almost entirely dependent on the Reich for its oil supplies. Well, this was a... Well, this is a tolerable situation of affairs, so the previous few decades is no longer a viable solution. Given the chaotic nature of the Reich's political situation and the unrest domestically, unfortunately, Britain is not currently in a position to reestablish any kind of trade internationally. This means that oil is rapidly becoming one of the most precious resources available for both sides of the uprising, from both an economic and military perspective. A recommended course of action, ration any all oil available, scavenge loot resistance vehicles for it, command, Commandeer civilian equipment and limit the amount of miles traveled by non-military personnel per day. The situation will hopefully be resolved before complete fuel shortage. Memorandum concluded. There we go. Um, let's scavenge all we can, get some synthetic fineries. It's not as if our, we, our only access to oil before the uprising was a singular continent-spanning tap coming straight from Germania, with several individual barrels scattered from across the country, coming from refineries factories and the like. In the coming struggle, it's vital that we secure each and every one of the barrels and drums. 
We cannot afford to leave even a drop of oil in the hands of resistance. Let's crush him in Liverpool. What in the bloody hell are they doing there? I don't understand. War, death, and chaos had become as much of a compar companion to Emma as Elizabeth had, she mused. It felt as if every time their cell gathered together discuss local ma matters things only got ever got worse she tried to keep a positive attitude it was all she could really do frankly but every time she learned from never cell resistance fighters getting lit on fire and left to die her view of the future dimmed ever so slightly that day she'd found out that yet another nearby resistance village had been captured by the government old bill had encouraged them to not be disheartened by the news and yet emma was sitting as rigid as a plank of wood in bed as old was softly cuddled her how that woman had managed to bush Pratt asked the existential dread was a mystery to her. She shifted it slightly, knees jabbing to her back. Emma sighed, trying desperately to settle down. What's the matter, love? Elizabeth asked. Emma, Emma almost wanted to scream. She had woken her up. Don't worry about it. Just go back to sleep. She could practically feel the stare in her up, stare boring into her side. She shifted, looking to her lover in the eye. Do you think we're going to win this? There was silence for a while before Elizabeth responded. I don't know, sweetheart. I don't know. Worst case, we can run away. Do you want that? Emma wasn't sure. Could she truly leave her country behind after she had tried to... S she had all she had done to try and save it? I don't know. Whatever it takes to keep you safe, I'll, I'll do it. She said, clutching Elizabeth trily. I mean it. If I have to shoot Colin Jordan himself in the head, then so be it. I'll always be there for you, Lizzie. Seemingly pacified, Elizabeth hummed gently and snuggled even closer to her lover. They could sleep ever so they could sleep soundly tonight, no matter what the bastards in the government tried. Love blooms on the battlefield. Next up. Let's save all we can. An official directive is being sent to every single regiment that we are currently fielding, that being to avoid destroying enemy vehicles if possible. This may seem like a strange order, but one must remember that each vehicle is filled with precious oil, which we can siphon out to fuel our vehicles. Whilst avoiding destruction of our enemy vehicles may seem contradictory to modern warfare, it's one of our only options given the circumstance. I... I'm actually going to change things up a little bit. Okay. Templar. There we go. God damn it, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on, Templar, get back here. Get an offensive line. And this, my friends, is the point where we just have to point and click. We're close. We're really... We're closing in on all this. All we gotta do is wait. Until the next video, because I gotta leave it here, gang. But thank you so much for watching. Like, if you like, dislike, if you didn't leave any comments, feedback down in the comment section below. I read all the comments to get, and I appreciate any old feedback you might have for me. Check my various links down in the description box below. And, yeah. And that's really it for now, my friends. I thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye now.